Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I trust that everyone at the sound of my voice, no matter where you are, what your position might be in life, no matter what you're suffering, whether you're rich, poor, you're well, or catching hell, doesn't matter. What matters most is how you react to your situation and what you realize that you have with inside of yourself. Because once you focus and tend to realize what you have inside of yourself, life takes on a different meaning and perspective. And so as a result, you wake up every day and you go to sleep every night and you go through your day and night, afternoon and evening, feeling despite all that is around you, feeling elastic, feeling fantastic, feeling rejuvenated, revitalized, feeling new, feeling marvelous and bombastic, knowing that you're God. What other people are looking for, you got. You got it all. You'll never fall. And if you fall, it's a temporary affair because you get up and you walk and you strut your stuff even stronger than ever. Strong each day as you walk along the way in Jesus Christ, my Kyle, all glory. Hallelujah, Jah. Let's sing a song. Let's start this off right. Some of y'all might know this song. Some of y'all might not realize this song ever existed. Some of y'all went to church and you would only think when it come right down to rowing the boat ashore or bringing the bacon home or delivering the people or overcoming Satan, Lucifer and Beelzebub and the evils of heaven. When you think of that, you think of only one thing, Jesus you think of only one thing, Jesus. Some of y'all don't realize that song and why. And who does? Who is the real Jesus? Instead of y'all worrying about people coming talking about they are the Christ and they are the Messiah and the false prophets and all that, y'all should first find out what is the real prophet. Until you know the real Jesus, you wouldn't be able to identify the false prophet. But when you know the real Jesus, you're going to see a tons and tons and tons of false prophets out there. So I'm going to start and sing this song. Philia, pleasure to have you aboard my ship. Let us sing. Michael, no, don't say Michael. I know you. I know you're normally hearing Michael rode a boat ashore. Alleluia. I know you hear Alleluia, Alleluia, and they got it spelled in such a funny way. You will never connect Allah, Yahweh, nor Jehovah. It's hard. Maybe Yah you might get and say Yah that's Yahweh. You know what I mean? But you'll never connect Allah, Yahweh, and Jehovah. When you sing in the Alleluia, the Alleluia, and when you look at how they have it spelt, it will keep your mind completely off it. But it's really when you listen to the sound. Alleluia. Ja. When you listen to that sound, Michael, and they don't want you to say Michael. They want you to say Michael. They want to leave out that E-L, that God. They want to talk about the devil and 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 the devil. But they want to leave out the one who kicked the devil ass. The one who defeated your worst enemy. They don't want to say, they, don't, they, 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 they want to leave out Michael. That's what they want to do. They serve in the devil's purpose. By leaving out Michael. They know God don't like it when you deny his name, reject his name, and won't take his name to heart and consider it. They don't like that. So they leave out Michael. They don't they want you to go to church, so they put up a bunch of buildings, you know what I mean? Go to church. Keep it up in the building. They don't want to tell you you are the church. 
They don't want you to know that. Hell no. We make these people up to tell them that they are a church. We're going to have a problem. They'll be all over the place witnessing. We don't want that. We want them shut down, locked down, stay in your house, stay in your car. Don't, stay, st don't, 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 don't come out here talking no church out here. They don't want that. They don't want you to talk about Michael to come in the latter days of calamity to deliver the people, the same one that overcome the devil. No, they don't want that. They don't want you coming around here about no Michael the deliverer, deliver the people. Uh uh. That's only for Jesus. Hell no. Michael can't deliver nobody. He is only an archangel. They don't want you to know about the Creator, the Lord of heaven and earth. They don't want you to know about the one and his angels that overcome the devil. They don't want none of that. They don't want the truth. They want to keep you in bondage. Much love. Much love. I couldn't see who it is, but guess what? I love you. Michael. So I don't want you to say, Michael rode aboard a shore. And I don't want you to say, Hallelujah. No, I don't want that. I want the truth. When you say hallelujah, I want to hear Allah for the Muslims. So the Muslim, every Muslim around the world could know, here I am. You was looking for me. You was looking for your imam. Here I am. Muhammad ain't got nothing on me. I love Muhammad, don't get me wrong. But I come to show you the way. I come to teach you the way. I come to show you who is, was, and forever shall be in me so that you could get it up out of thee and speak the word of the living God live. More sting than a beehive. No jive. So let's sing along with me so you can understand what you're dealing with. This is life and death, people. This Michael I'm telling you about. Oh yeah, I am come. I am in the spirit of the living God. And there's going to be many out there that's going to say, Well, I got the spirit of God too, so I don't need you. That's just like saying, we don't need the president. Every man for himself, do whatever the hell you like. That means you could have the police force, but no commissioner. You could have a government, but no governor. You could have, you could have heaven, and no God of it. You could have a universe. And no creator. Creation with no creator. This is what they want. So, when I tell you, I am the master spirit. The spirit of Jesus Christ himself. You have a choice. You can believe me. Or you can try to fight me. You can decide to be my enemy. You can doubt me. You can have fears. You could, have, you could cast stones at me. You could do all kinds of things. But before you do that, let's, let's get to singing the song. Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise your name, O oh Father. So that none can think that I would have pride, O oh Lord, my God. To puff myself up with some foolish nonsense and kill myself trying to steal your glory. Lord, so that they could know that it is thee that is in me whom word I speak. So that they could know, O oh Lord, my God, it is thou that thou mandated and ordained me for this mission. So that they could look not to me like a puffed up with pride man 
nor a deceived man, nor a confused man, nor a man that has rotted out his brains, rotted out with marijuana, nor a man that, that, that is wicked on doing things of the devil. But a man that has been called and has answered the call, a man that has been given the mandate to execute on the planet, a man that has come in thy name and in thine image, a man that has been born in the West, for thou this time has come in the West, O oh Lord, my God and living Master, the Master of the world, the Master of the universe, praise thy holy name, and in heaven, in paradise, O oh, glorify thy name, O oh, Holy Trinity. Hallelujah. Father, thou art mandated me to bring forth and to relax all the confusion, to break the bondage, to break the chains that bind thy people, to open their eyes that they might see, to vindicate your son Jesus, my elder brother, to vindicate him, to judge this world and rule it, O oh Lord my God, with a rod of iron that thou art given me, and the bright and morning star, O oh Lord my God, and I promise thou art kept that I am sharing jointly, in full power and authority with thee as one. That when they hear my word, O Lord my God, that they be not deceived and know that it is thee that speak from my mouth, the mouth of the living God. Oh, I thank you, Lord, O God and Master, and let the world rejoice that thou art come a second time in the Son of Man of Nassau or Bahamas. Michael rode the boat ashore. Alleluia! Michael rode the boat ashore. Alleluia! The river Jordan is mighty cold. Alleluia, ja, chills the body, but not the soul. Alleluia, ja. Let us do. You are the church. Are not the building. Many people of today have been deceived. Many say I go to church and I pay my tithes and offerings and Jesus Christ died for my sins. I am going to make it in. Oh, when we get to heaven, those pearly, pearly gates and streets of gold And they look at Jesus Christ and his life and look at salvation like it's a cakewalk. Nothing to it. Easy. A cakewalk. Nothing to it. Deceiving themselves with lies. Jesus Christ himself said, Until you do the will of my Father that is in heaven, you could call on my name till you turn black and blue. You're not going to make it through. And they always miss out the part about repentance. A lot of y'all go to church in the buildings and y'all haul around those buildings. Lord, Lord, I have no problems with you going to church in the building to congregate yourselves. That is good. That is good. It is good to build a house of the Lord and go and worship and praise and love ye one another and teach and learn. But after you have learned and you have been taught, now you have to take that message, what you have been taught. 
You have to go to your scripture and expand on it. You have to go to your scripture, expand on it, and prepare the things that you have learned to tell the people out there that does not go to your building. How do you reach them out there? You're looking at them out there as if they're drowning because they're not in church. They don't go to church. So if they're the dead people drowning and you're supposed to be alive, then you're supposed to be out of that church building into the world, to the four corners of the world, to the highest rooftop, not even putting your life before your testimony. Because you are the church and not the building. Many of you wonder why your societies are crumbling underneath you. Why? Because you think church is the building. So there's no light in the darkness to shine. You're keeping your light confined to the buildings. Some of you all keep your light confined to Facebook. And all you all do is post, post here and post there. You're scared to go live. Some who got the courage to go live, you go live and then you post your little stuff, but you don't go out there. You're surrounded by hundreds of people on a daily basis in certain instances, but you say nothing. Where is your light? Cat got your tongue? Where's your love for Jesus Christ when it comes right down to public public ministry. Jesus' life was mostly public ministry. Jesus' life was not going to some building and staying there year in and year out and saying you are a member of some church. And then you see your society crumbling around you and you're walking around proud thinking that, oh, those that are paid up. Uh, no, you are a hypocrite. A lot of people get mad and say, man, this man sound like he angry, like he rowing us and stuff like that. You damn right I'm angry. You damn right I'm arguing with you. You damn right I am giving you instructions for your lives. This is nothing to play with. I'm not your regular pastor. I am your Messiah. Your life and your death. Get it in your heads. Before it's too late. I am. Get that. You don't need my word that I give you. It is death. Everybody looking to be patted on the back. Everybody looking to be sucked up to. Licked up to. Everybody looking to be pampered. What kind of soldiers you all are. What kind of pansies. What kind of limp wristed, twisted, busted crusted and disgusted lot of Christian folks alive today professing to love God. What should I do in a case like this? Should I butter you up to tell you it's going to be okay if you continue doing what you're doing? I would be lying to you. Your life your soul depends on your testimony. You shall die if you cover your testimony. Death shall overtake you. If you refuse to testify in public and claim to be saved by the blood of Jesus on my elder brother's blood, you think my elder brother died for you to relax in the sunshine? You think my elder brother went through what he went through? So you can just chill? It ain't that kind of party. If I'm talking to you about life and death, what should be my disposition? What should be my urgency? What should be my carry and call?
How shall I conduct myself with you? Should I, should I not yell 911? Man overboard? Man sinking in the darkness, in the abyss, into the abomination, to the pit of abomination? My church has gone to the dogs? Should I not scream out and yell out? Come! Take a hold of the life raft as I look down into the abyss and see my people swirling around and going down under. Being deceived, not knowing what they do. Should I not throw out the life raft and say, hold on, hold on, take my hand, take my hand. Take my hand before it's too late. Should I not reach out and try to rescue my flock? Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the bond, the glue that keep it together. What good is it if you hide your light under a bushel? What good would it be that you go and take your light to the building but don't take it out to the world where it's needed? To the boys and the girls and the men and the women in the stores everywhere, in business everywhere, in schools everywhere. Are you ashamed of your rights to talk the word of the living God in your school and education system? Are you ashamed because you would say, well, somebody in here might not be a Christian. I don't give a damn. Somebody in here might be a Muslim, might be a Jew, and they don't want to hear that. Well, guess what? Cork ears or kill your ass out the building. Because Michael has come. I come to save you. If the Muslim don't want to hear your Christianity, Muslims go and chop Christians' head off. The extreme Muslims. The only time they had killings with Christian killing, killing uh, 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 Muslims or, or Jews or anything of that nature was when they had this, the, the, those types of dictatorship situations where the king suddenly he became Christian, Christianized and he decided, okay, we got to get rid of these other ones because we don't have a problem with them. It is supposed to be an atmosphere whereby Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Jews, everybody can express their opinions and express their views. That's religious freedom on any religion. Lucifer had a chance to propagate his nefarious, his multifarious, his atrocious, sagacious and tenacious plot and scheme he had a chance to run on and on with his foolishness and nonsense his cosmically and universally suicidal nonsense and he went out and said out loud When these girls get on Facebook and they want to show their booty, their cootie, their titties, they bold with it. They're bold with it. And they're going in public showing them booties, them cooties, and titties. How bold are you to take the word of God in public? Didn't Jesus say, if you're ashamed of me before a man, so shall I be ashamed of you before my father and his angels. Clark Street. Glad to have you aboard my ship, my brethren.
I remember a long time ago, Kirk, you believed in me to the extent whereby you followed me around and helped me around, even going to the churches with me trying to spread this news and being thrown out of the churches, trying to encourage me on the buses and all that. Nowadays, you ain't checking for me. I call you on the phone, you don't answer. I check you and I write you on, on, on Facebook, you don't respond. I ask my disciple to let you know, hit me up, they don't hear from you. I don't know what I do against you, what caused you to be like that to me. I haven't gone and planted a tree which you donated money to me for. I planted a tree, and the tree I have a name for it. Kirk's tree. Kirk Street on Kirk Street. But I am your Messiah, Kirk. I am the Messiah. I am the living word of God. Denarius, he goes with you. Whatever you say, that's how he swing. That's his thing. Whatever is wrong, I don't know with you. Well, time is gonna tell. Because those who are not with me, they're dead people walking, including you, Kirk. You're either going to help me and be my and be one of mine, or you're going to stand up against me, Kirk. I love you, bro. My doors are open to all of y'all. But if all of y'all think that this, y'all going to wait to see what's going to happen, keep waiting. I know who my true friends are now. Because this is the time when I'm, this is the time when I'm, you know, this, this is the making time. You are the church, not the building. If you ashamed the God in public and profess my name before a man, and you can't go professing Jesus no more, just Jesus. No, you have the knowledge of Michael. And those of you who do not have the knowledge of Michael, go in your Bible, Revelation chapter 12, and see who overcome the devil and his angels. Go to your Bible. And that's the New Testament. Those of you that say the New Testament is garbage and say that's Paul's work, uh-uh. The book of Revelations is not Paul's work. The book of Revelations was handed to John on the Isle of Patmos 60 years after Jesus' resurrection from the dead. That is where the Urantia book is. U-R-A-N-T-I-A dot org. U-R-A-N-T-I-A dot org. U-R-A-N-T-I-A, Urantia book, Urantia.org, U-R-A-N-T-I-A, the book of books on the planet. And I am its author and its finisher, the word of the living God. That's my book. That's the book of Jesus' life from G the man Jesus' point of view. But the spirit, which you, when you hear me say, that's my book, that's Michael. That's my spirit, Michael. Those of y'all who do not know me, y'all will get to know me now. Those of you who was confused about who was the real Jesus, well, you know the real Jesus now. When you go to Daniel chapter 12, this is the Old Testament, you'll see Michael, your prince, shall rise and deliver the people in the last days of apocalypse. Those of you who feel like Michael is only an archangel, go to 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16 and see if, that's an, if he's only an archangel, see why 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16 said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a loud voice and a command, with the voice of the archangel on the trump, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. I come to rise, bring all of you all to life, you all dead people who walk in thinking you're living, but you're dead. Thinking you know, but know not. Thinking you see, but you are blind. Thinking you hear, but understand not, hear not. Because your eyes and ears is of the world. And so your eyes within is closed to me. I come to make war with my mouth. I come with the sword. I come to tell you like it is, you are the church. I come to tell you, do not be no limp the church. Do not be mediocre. When you go to the book of Revelations, chapter, chapter 1, 2, and 3, 
concerning the seven letters. I'm going to repeat it. Revelations chapter 1, 2, and 3. You see, because if you don't study, if I give you everything, you won't study. And so you wouldn't learn. And as a result, you will burn. When you go read the first three chapters of the book of Revelations and find out Jesus' temperament with respect to various sins and abominations that the people do, that the churches were doing back then, that he was warning them, and knew that it was as applied to, to this time also, and all time. You are my church and not the building. Do not be mediocre nor lukewarm, because you'll be spotted from my mouth. This is real, people. This is real. Those of you who know in your hearts you could do far more than you're doing for Christ, for God, knowing that you could study more and learn more, knowing that you could stop having this attitude of just laying back and doing whatever you want to do with your life and leaving God out. That's death. That's death. To him who much is given, much is required. If if, if, if people prayers for lack of knowledge and the people gonna the mediocre people serving God with a half heart, God is not that type of God. God wants all or none. You want to worship God, praise God, be obedient to God and love. Don't say you love God and be disobedient to God. Setting your own standards and setting your own rules. That doesn't work. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me before a man in the public, I will be ashamed to profess your name before my father and his angels. My father and his angels. Who do you think that is? Michael and his angels. <clears throat> Michael and his angels. What is my church? My people. And who are my people? They're not liars and deceivers. My people are not idolaters. They put me first. They put the spirit of the living God first above all things. They regard me as their first love. My church regard me as their husband. My people look at me as the husband. The women and the men. No sex involved. But the husband. My church does not fornicate and commit adultery. My church don't encourage fornication and adultery. My church don't tolerate fornication and adultery my church is ever vigilant to stamp it out my church is ever vigilant and not negligent in showing the people of their sins ezekiel chapter 33 if you don't tell them the sin is on you ezekiel chapter 33 if you don't tell them the sin is on you when you come to listen to jesus christ michael bring a pen and a paper your notepad, I don't care what you do. Make notes. Make notes of every scripture what I say. Because everything what I say is documented and can be backed up. And it's facts. It's your life and it's your death. It's according to the word of the living God. I'm not your Joel Osteen or your T.D. Jakes. I am real salvation for Joel Osteen and T.D. Jakes. Farrakhan, Elijah Muhammad, Deepak Chopra, Oprah, Beyonce, Obama, Osama, everyone. Every VIP and celebrity, come unto me. You will love me. Believe me, you will love me when you feel filled, when you know that you will turn back from sin and go in no longer. You will never go back into sin. You will live a holy and righteous life and be filled and be happy and rejoice and acquire a peace that surpasses all understanding in the midst of any storm. 
when you put your trust in me. My church don't, don't commit idolatry. They put nothing over the spirit of the living God. My church is married to me and ready. And if my church ain't ready, now that I am come, get ready. That's my church. My church loved the things that I love and hate the things that I hate. My church don't encourage LGBT. My church showed a way out of LGBTQRA. My church don't encourage pollution, corruption. My church encourage prayer, fasting, a love, a study of God on his ways. My church keep my covenant. My church does not take my name in vain. My church love one another. My people, they love one another. They take care of each other. They are there for each other. My true church. My true church leave no stone unturned. My church light the path and show the way. My church know my word because they study my word. My church is an open heart as a child and my church learn more and more each day and grow and grow for the soul that does not grow shall surely go, cease. The soul that does not grow shall surely go, it shall cease. Hear me, the soul that refused to grow, the soul that says, I know it all and I am not changing. You can't tell me nothing. I don't believe nothing you're saying. That, that's a dead soul. That I'm not going to check out nothing. And even if I check it out and I see it, I don't care what happens. I'm going to stay believing in what I believe in. The blood of Jesus. That's a dead church. Because that's the same church that Jesus confronted when they say, Moses, 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 who the hell you think you is but you're Yahshua? Go on, go from around here. Talking about you greater than Moses? Huh? You come out of Mary around here talking about you as God? Even Moses didn't say he was God. You coming around here talking about you as God? You must be crazy. You gotta be possessed with demons? You've been drinking too much of that wine with them sinners. You's a blasphemer. Mary and Joseph need to come for you. Before them Romans get a hold of you. And nail your ass to the cross. You're a dangerous man. You're a danger to yourself and you're a danger to your family. You're a danger to everybody. You're a dangerous man. Mark my word. They can kill you. They can crucify you. You deserve it. You deserve to die. When you speak the truth, when you come to the, with the truth and you come to break the bonds that hold the people, the institutionalized, traditionalized, crystallized, secularized, bastardized, dogmatized ways of ordinary, rudimentary Christianity, Islam, Buddhism and all. When you come to break and, and, and raise a new standard for all to come and see. Oh, you can bet the leaders of every one of them. They're going to be ignoring you when you call on them. They're going to ignore you. 
They're going to ignore you and push you off as much as possible because, first of all, they don't want nobody. No, they don't want no eyes on you because based on what you're talking, you're going to show them up. So they want to duck you. They want to dodge you. They don't want to have no time with you. The hell with whether you're talking is the truth or not. The fact is, is that you're showing them up. So you're talking the truth. You're exposing them. You're bringing out the hypocrisies and democracies. You're showing them what they lack and they're literally not telling the whole truth. You're showing them that God has given you the hidden manna. God has given you revelations. And you come to bring them higher. But they, on their totem poles, they don't want to acknowledge you. They don't want to give you no steam. And they're going to tell their congregations, many shall come and say this to Christ. Don't, don't, don't pay that fellow no mind. Don't pay that fellow no mind. He's talking nonsense. They're eating lose his mind. Ain't no name greater than Jesus. Where you going with that? Michael is only an archangel. Where you going with that? Talking about he's the Messiah. So they will paint me in their congregations as evil and that the people shouldn't check for me. And I would have to go for years and years and years until the truth coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. Don't give up. When you know in your heart that you're telling the truth. Don't bend to public pressure. Don't bend to the majority. The majority is not always right. And you got to have courage and conviction and love for God to give your life for the mission. Against all odds, you shall prevail. You cannot fail. When I sent my messages to Dr. Miles Monroe, having great respect for him and all that, of Bahamas fake ministries in the Bahamas. My messages were ignored and ignored and ignored and ignored and ignored. I never got a time to see him. I never got an appointment to see him. Just ignoring me, pushing me aside, pushing me aside. Sent out one last, one last post to him trying to get a hold of him and so forth. Then they responded back with a message which showed that he was all over the world bringing thousands to Jesus Christ. Who the hell am I? Get the hell out of here. Who are you, nigga? One of their members was evicted out of a, out of a place. And I stayed with her trying to help her out, making sure that that woman slept on the ground in a garage, on the floor, in an open garage, on the concrete. And to make sure she was safe, I laid down beside her. No sex, no touching, no nothing. Just there to protect her. That's all it was. True tonight. Because I had no way to put her. Did my best to bring whatever food I could bring for her and everything and take care of her as best as I could. Till a couple of days later, the truck pulled up from BFM with the BFM people. So, you know, that's a good thing. They were taking care of their member. I guess she felt so good about me and what I did to help her and so forth. She invited me one evening to go with her. They had a meeting in that church upstairs at, on, on Carmichael Road. And I went with her. But it was as if they were waiting an ambush for me because they knew about me. All of my teachings and what I'm talking and so forth about the Messiah and I am he. Daniel's prophecy. So when I started to speak, it was as if they didn't want me to talk about nothing. They decided to escort me out to church. And when I realized what was going on, I started preaching even louder. I, didn't, I wasn't really preaching, but I started to preach. And I started pumping it up when I realized what they were doing. And so I was down in the foyer, downstairs. And I started preaching even louder downstairs. And so they, they came downstairs and they told me, I got to get outside. So I went outside and I preached the hell loud as hell outside. The building shook at the sound of my voice. And I prophesied. 
After a while, I heard about the accident. Bernadette Brennan Johnson, who was a tenant, a former tenant at Heather's apartment out there on, on uh, Village Road. I think it's Village Road South. Fox Hill Road, they call it. Fox Hill Road South. Way down there. I was collecting my brother's in law's rent. And she came to me and she started talking to me about the, the accident. She said that she saw, this is her testimony she told me. She said she was in Freeport at the time of the accident with Bahamas Faith Ministry on Dr. Miles Monroe. She said that she heard a, she, she heard this rushing wind. And when she looked up, she saw this cloud. And say the cloud looked like it had eyes. Say the cloud looked like it was moving as if it had intent and purpose. Say the cloud looked like it was angry. And say the cloud was flying very low. It was a dark cloud and was flying very low. She said, I said, this cloud was moving, she said. And she said, the next thing she heard was this bang and this like this, this boom sound or whatever it was. And she came and when she came around the bend, she saw the plane in the dump. And she said, somebody, she said she saw the body on the wing and somebody came down and said, that's Dr. Miles Monroe. And then somebody else came to me several months later and told me that the head was missing and found in the dump. Decapitated. Now, I want you all to understand something here. I'm not saying this to puff myself up to go gloat over nobody's death and somebody's losing their, fa and their death and their family and all that. I don't have no time for stupidness. When God give you something as your testimony, you're going to be afraid. Even the news in the Bahamas are afraid to go and tell the truth about Dr. Miles Monroe head being chopped off and found in the dump. All of them because they respected this man. This was a man of honor and intent and all these kind of things. And so they don't want to tell the people the real truth of what happened. That's how it is. They try to cover these things. That's a normal thing. Many people, things happen to people who hire mighty, high up there in power and all that. But you, know, you never know what's happening. But if it was somebody low down there, they would have the full details on what happened if it was so gory. They'd been making all kinds of shots of it. But they tried to cover that up. Unless the people who came to me with testimony were lying. I, I, I can't see them lying about that. that, that, that that'll be on their heads. Somebody else told me that down here at, uh, on 441 uh, at, the, at the Tag Agency on, on 7th Avenue on it's about 110th Street, a Tag Agency right there. I was in there and, and I was talking, uh, uh, preaching and so forth. And he said about Dr. Miles Monroe, he was in a church in Pembroke, Pembroke, Pembroke Pines or Pembroke, somewhere in Pembroke, somewhere. And he said that Dr. Miles Monroe and his people was in there and they was asking for money for gas for the, for the jet. <sighs> and um, they said they're coming back again and they were asking for money again. And he said he didn't like how it was being done. He didn't like, he, he felt like it was like money. It was, that's how he felt. And he said that when he heard about the crash, two days later, he said, two days or the next day, something, something he said was very close within that time. You know, he said that he was, he was shocked. You know, then he heard about this crash. But what I'm trying to tell you is this, right? I come with a message to the church. I come with a message to the church. Many of these pastors know already, many of them, hundreds and thousands of them have heard about me. But they won't give me a chance. Now, if I had money to help them and there's something or make a big donation, they would have been licking the shit out of my ass. But the truth what I bear, they don't want to hear. And even when they hear it, they want to shun me and push me away. They will not bring it to the people. They will not. They, they, they love the money and the control on the system the way it is and their comfort zones that they're experiencing in this. They love that more than the truth. They love that more than Christ. They love that more than God, more than serving God. They don't care about you all. It's more about the money. And this is why they tell you all things like, 
Oh, you're going to get a car, you're going to get a house, you're going to have your baby, you're going to get married, and you're going to this and that and the next, and all kinds. And, and Satan want to talk your wealth and your prosperity and all that. And, but they don't, they, 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 that's the most prevalent thing in their minds and in their hearts, what they're preaching. They're not telling you about soul salvation. It is gift. It's, if you are rich or you are poor, if you are sick or you are well or catching hell, what is the condition of your soul? What is your relationship with your God? Are you being the church? Or are you going to the building? Or you don't check for nothing at all? Are you putting other things before God? That's not the church. The church is 100% God first over husband, wife, children, friends, relatives, mother, father, sister, brother, house, job, VIP, celebrity, games, anything in your life. Without God, you couldn't have nothing. He got to be first. He deserved to be first in your life. Are you having sex out of marriage because it's convenient, because it's sweet, because you don't, you ain't ready for no marriage? You ain't ready for no responsibility? You don't have no house, you don't have no car, so you can't even consider talking about getting married, but yet you want grind. You want your cake and you want to eat it too. You want spit in God's face. And then you want to say you don't want to get married. Well, then leave sex alone. That's whether you are young or whether you are old. It does not matter. It is a matter of when you know better. When you know better is when you do better. Many of you men will have more than one wife. Many of you all will have like one woman as your wife and then you want to have one or two little booty calling sweethearts. Some of you all wives will have your husband and then you want to have your booty calling too. Some of you all wives say your husband, oh he doing it, so I'm, not, I'm nobody fool. I'm nobody fool. You're all tired of your finances so you don't want to part. So you want, and you're comfortable the way you are. So it's best to just keep a sweetheart. When your wife piss you off, you get mad, stomp and slam the door and tell her, you going, man, I going out with the boys. Man, I going to the food store. Man, I going down here. Man, I going down here. No, you going between some booty. And a lot of the women, they they glad when you get out of the house and go. When you go, they get on the phone. They get on the phone and call Tyrone. They be meeting around the corner. Getting it done up in the back seat, the front seat, on the hood, and on the trunk. Getting bunk. In the hotel inn, laying in sin. Anytime you put your own selfish aggrandizement, your own selfish lusts, your own selfish pride and greed over the spirit of the living God, Knowing that you got to live your life to be saved. And it's not based on anybody else's. It's a personal thing between a man and his God. A woman and her God. A child and his God or her God. You are the church and not the building. If you can't hold back. And restrain your passions. If you refuse to fall in love with God. To that point where you could make an agreement with God. Knowing in your heart Lord. I know it's wrong oh Lord. 
I can't let my dickhead get in the way. I can't let my clithead get in the way. I can't let my money or my house or nobody, my husband, my wife, my children, my mother, my father, my friends, I can't let nothing get in the way, oh Lord, my God, between you and I. I promise you, Lord, I covenant with you, Lord, I'm going to be a holy person to you. I'm going to clean up my act, oh Lord, my God. And when you come into the reality of God in your mind, with you, never to leave you nor forsake you. When you come in that reality that the Father is like trapped, knowing that no matter what you do, how you treat him, no matter what you do, that he still love you and he still knows you, he created you. And knowing that you are a creature, and knowing that you are mortal, and knowing of your physical inclinations and your sensual lust, he knows this and he understands this. And so he's there, trapped. Watching you destroy yourself, but yet at the same token, he is doing everything with the hosts and the angels that is around you, trying to guide you, to encourage you, sending different people messages, putting me now on the planet to make sure you know that I give my life for your salvation, that you would know the way and you would restrain your passions and covenant with your God. Consecrate yourself with your God. Sanctify yourself with your God. When you do it, when you do it, when you do it, you become it. You are my church. You are my light. You are the salt of the earth. You are a healing balm. You are a walking gods. And goddesses. When you fall in love with God, then you know that See, it's difficult for you to fall in love. But I want you all to understand something. Love is not something that you fall into. Love is something that you choose to fall into. You choose who you are going to love. Now, if your love is based on some material things and all that, then your love doesn't have no true substance. Your love is mere vanity. Temporary. And you will choose to love and say you love somebody because they do this or they do that or they got this or they got that. But when you choose to love someone and God is a someone, the ultimate, supreme, an absolute someone, when you choose to love God, that's when you're not loving because of sex. Because, oh baby, you do, you lay some good pipe on me. Oh baby, you got some sweet kitty. Oh baby, that, 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 sweet, sweet. Then you call in the nigga name. Then you call in the gal name. Calling each other's name out loud. Oh. Eyes going back on your head, turning white. So sweet. Body trembling and turning numb. Got you. Got you. Got you. You go writing them big check and putting out all your money. Giving your heart away. Oh, I'm so much in love. I'm so much in love. Oh, I love him so much. Oh, I love her so much. She's the woman for me. He's the man for me. Oh, my God. Oh. When you fall in love with God, that's the sweetest love that you could ever have. That's a love that is everlasting. That's a love when your love of this world fall. You got it all. 
Then your love of this world wax cold. You got it all hot on fire. Then you are disappointed with the ones that you say you love or they love you. And you get so much disappointed. You say, well, by damn, I never thought this would happen. I might as well go jump over the cliff and kill myself. Because I put my all into her. I put my all into him. I can't live without him. You'd be like doing a Tony Braxton. I'll never breathe again. My church is in love with me. My church follow me. My church is pure and holy. My church are the gods that walk. My church testify, magnify, edify, and glorify my name. My church take my name to heart and consider. My church study to show herself worthy and approved. My church know me. My church don't look at the works outside. My church know that the kingdom of God is within. And greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. My church know not to look up in the sky. My church know to do the work down here now. Because only the true and doing the works. My church don't look at doing the works as walking in water or turning water to wine. My church look at doing the works as being out of sin. And shining the light of righteousness and their testimony that they don't sin no more. My church is perfect. My church sin no more. My church know what is sin and what is not sin. My church is not ashamed to change. My church is not ashamed to grow. My church is not ashamed to bring revelations to the world. My church is my sheep, and my sheep know my voice. My church will come and try my spirit. My church will come and reason with my word. My church wouldn't just throw judgment upon me and say, he is an antichrist and this and that. My church will reason and test the spirit. My church is wise. My church knows that the word of God is a double-edged sword because one word of God says, don't mark yourself. The next word say, they shall have his name and the father's name written in their forehead. My words say, wine is a mocker. Avoid wine. But my word also say, a little bit of wine is good for the soul. There's a time and a place for all things. And my church know this. When my church see the word about the new name of Christ, Revelation 3 verse 12, and about the deliverer to come to rise in the last days, Daniel 12, and the Satan and Lucifer being overcome by the... My church know these things. My church know about Michael. And when my church hear about Michael, my church come. You are the church, not the building. My church are a peculiar people. My church stand out from the crowd. My church is not like the majority. My church leads the majority. You are my church, not the buildings. My church will encourage people out of LGBTQ and A, baby killing, destroying the home and the family, destroying the infrastructure of society. My church will stand up against the government, stand up against religion. Dogmas and tradition. My church will stand up against big business and big oil and all them for what is right. My church will instruct the politicians and advise the politicians and tell them and show them the way and that they must make their legislators, make legislature and all of their laws and all their constitutions to surround the word of the living God for this time and occasion. That's my church. My church is open 24-7.
not just open a couple of hours during the day on a Sunday or Monday and then argue about what day is the Sabbath. My church is real seven days a week, alive, loud and clear. My church does not take my name in vain. In the name of Jesus Christ, Michael, I say, come church. Come. Come raise yourselves from the dead by your choosing to come to Jesus Christ. Michael, come. Y'all see, see the flag in my banner in the back? Jesus Christ, Michael, superhuman ministry of divinity. You see the Jewish sign on, the, on, the, on, on there? Right there? You see it right up there? Okay. That's the honor of Israel. All right? You know, that's the first coming. That's Jesus. The cross, the light, the sword right there. The Bahamian flag raised up. Lift up your head to the rising sun, Bahamalan. The Bahamas has risen. A new sun. The crown with the seven stars, seven churches, seven angels, seven spirits. The seven super universes, the seven spirit masters, God the sevenfold. You understand me? The five points on the crown. One, two, three, four, five points on the crown. The Urantia book, the fifth epochal mission, the fifth epochal mission to this planet. Okay. The three M's in the beaming flag, the outside M, the inside M, and the two big, the two big, big blue legs with the big black in the middle, the big huge M. The three M's in the beaming flag. Michael the man, that's me. Michael the archangel, that's me. And Michael the creator, that's me. Because we're all working in concert together as one. I and my father are one. You understand me? The courage of the lions to face and face all tasks, all difficulties, all adversities, knowing that you shall prevail in the truth. And you must have courage to stand up against the majority to do that. The fires of the Holy Ghost, the fires of the ancients of days, the commissioners and arbiters and super, super universe rulers of time and space worlds. The fires that came down from the throne of the ancients of days, the Holy Ghost fire, the Holy Ghost, the mother spirit of this universe, Nebadonia. You got the father and the mother of this universe. You see, also on this side, worlds without end. You see the worlds without end? And all these different worlds and the super universes. And then on this side, you see the the three concentric cycles with the world in the middle. That's the Paradise Trinity. The Father in the center. The Universal Father, Al Yaja, Allah, Yahweh, and Jehovah. Al Yaja, Allah, Yahweh, and Jehovah. Al Yaja, the Universal Father. Michael, the second cycle. The Eternal Son. And El Yul Yaja, the Infinite Mother. And you see the light of Paradise all around it. When you look at that light, on that white all around it, on that three concentric blue circles, on that white background, that is the literal flag of Nebadon. The flag of Nebadon. N E B A D O N, our universe. Okay? Michael of Nebadon. Blue. That's my favorite color. My first car was blue. Royal blue. Just like what I'm wearing. Whatever kind of blue this is. Somebody call it something else. All right? But that's the deal. Okay? So people, I come to tell you the truth. I come to give you the truth. I come to shine this light. I come to show you the way that you must also be. Don't be thinking that Jesus went to his death so that you can go in ahead and go into sin and think you're going to get in. The disciples showed you after Jesus' resurrection, they went to their deaths also. They went, they professed and confessed and did what they had to do. They didn't even put their life before their testimonies. They were willing to die for it. You Christians need to come and be real. Okay, be willing to put your life on the line for the truth. Okay, be willing to face your family, whether they say that I'm anti-Christ or whether I'm the false prophet or whatever. Be able to face for the name of the truth and, and face persecution for my name's sake. Because you know I am the truth. And so if you're afraid to be persecuted because of me, then you, you're going to fall into the category. You know, you're going to lose your soul because you were afraid to speak up for the truth. You're going to lose your soul because you were afraid to speak up for the truth. Okay, come to the truth, the way, and the light, and the life of the worlds. I am He. I love you guys. I love you with all my heart and soul. I'm here for you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, even till the end. 
I said, I will never leave you. I am in the spirit of the living God. I will never forsake you, even till the end. I am full of forgiveness. I am quick to forgive. I will forgive you of all your sins. I will wash you clean. I will show you the way. And you will know in your heart that you shall be saved. And you have a life to look forward after this life. In an uncertain times that you don't know what's going on. And, and you could be, your soul could be required tonight. Nobody knows their hour. But I'm telling you, I am here to give you the peace. My peace. But remember, in order for me to free you, I have to go to war. I have to tell you the truth. And I come to fight with my mouth. I come with a sword and with fire. I love you all. And I come to rescue my flock from destruction. Put up my banner. You will find healing and protection. You will find a peace. Never mind if you get persecuted, like I say. I come to put a sword. Some of you are going to believe in me, then your parents and other people are going to come up against you and tell you you must be crazy and they're going to put pressure on you and they're going to dissuade you from following me or even learning and stuff like that. That's your soul. They can't, they can't, they cannot save your soul. Don't go and turn your back from the truth because you want to you want to appease your parents or your relatives or your friends or your sisters or your brothers or your pastors. Don't go and turn your back on me for them because they cannot save you. Only you from accepting the truth and you are being judged. Everything what I tell you is truth. And if you continue in sin and thinking that you're going to get into heaven, when I already exposed to you what is sin and what is not sin and what is righteous in the sight of God to do, and you continue doing the unrighteous thing, you know better, you got to do better. I don't care what's your age, what's your nationality, what's your race or, or your religion. You got to do the truth when the truth come. Or you're going to find out death, 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 death. Just weeding out, weeding out, weeding out before the burn. And then those of the righteous, you're going to be saved. You're going to be salvaged. You're going to be protected from all harm that come upon the planet. Come with me. Those with me, raise your banners high. Don't be ashamed. If you're ashamed of me, I'm going to be ashamed of you. I'm telling you all the truth. When you hear me, you hear heaven. Heaven is with me. Come. Let me show you the way. Let me clean up this planet. I have seen it already in vision. I have seen these things. But I will tell you another time. I got to go now. Okay. I love you all. In the name of Jesus Christ, Michael. Everybody got to know. Everybody got to know who Jesus is. He's my Kyle. Everybody got to know. Everybody got to know who Michael is. He's my Kyle. Jesus Christ. He is the lilies of the valley, the spirit of Jesus Christ. He is the bright and morning star. He is the fairest of 10,000. Everybody's got to know. Everybody got to know. Everybody got to know who Jesus is. He's my Kyle, the spirit of truth. Everybody got to know. Everybody got to know who's my Kyle. He's Jesus Christ. He is the universe creator. He is the bright and morning star. He is the fairest of ten thousand. Everybody.
everybody's got to know Michael of Nebadon. Michael of Nebadon. You'll barely hear me. Nebadon. The universe. The universe, the universe, Lord and Sovereign Master, Michael. I'm only a man. Jesus was only a man walking in the spirit of the living God. You can't talk about Jesus. You got to walk in Jesus. You can't talk about Jesus coming. When they see you, they're supposed to see Jesus. When they hear you, they're supposed to hear Christ and his God. And until when they see you, they see Christ. Until when they hear you, they hear Christ. Then guess what? You could look up as much as you want to look up. Ain't nothing happening for you. You ain't ready. Until you're ready to be like unto God. You ain't ready talking about God. You've got to be ready by being as God, shining the light of God that is in you to shine. And if you don't shine that light, that light is going to be taken away. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is the fairest of 10,000. Michael, Jesus Christ, Michael. I love you. Remember it's about love. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't be here. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't have committed so much of my life to this. If I didn't love you, I would not have faced having threats on my life, being persecuted and sticking with it to make sure you know the truth. If I didn't love you, I would have been running behind the booty, the cootie, and the looty. The celebrities and the VIPs dropping to my knees to suck some D's for photo opportunities. If I didn't love you, it would have been about the money, the honey, and the playboy bunny. If I didn't love you, I would have loved the world under hell with you. But I love you. Because I love, I'm in love deeply, covenanted consecrated, sanctified, giving honor and glory to my God on high in this mission of world saving. I love you all. In the name of Jesus Christ, Michael, go out there and raise your banners high and call upon my name for the Lord is nigh. Always.